Good morning, folks. It's likely safe to say that you are aware of an Asiana Airlines flight that crash-landed at the San Francisco airport. The Boeing 777 twin-engine ER-200 went down at 1953 UTC. But I bet you didn't know that just five minutes earlier, at 1948 UTC, at the Athens International Airport across the planet, an Asiana Airlines Boeing 777 twin-engine ER-200 had a fire breakout and barely got down in time to avoid major problems. Same airline has two identical models taken out in the span of five minutes on opposite sides of the planet. You better believe I'm coming back to this. Mexico. Hurricanes and earthquakes and volcanoes. Oh my. Popo with another nighttime display for us. She's been active on and off like this for a year. Beautiful. Coming to India. Perspective on their flooding. Notice how our rivers are thin. You can see civilization on the banks. At least you used to be able to see them. Some bad news about the 6.1 reported from Indonesia yesterday. Dozens are dead and the totals are still coming in. Yesterday's largest tremor was a five-pointer at Easter Island. An above-average quake just struck Arizona a few hours ago. USGS missing the northern Russia quake and some rumbling at the Azores Islands in the Atlantic. Hurricane Eric? Where else but Mexico? Baja needs to be alert as well. That Gulf low under siege yesterday is officially dead, and we turn our attention to the Mid-Atlantic tonight. Getting a bit chilly in Tasmania and southern New Zealand, a low cell near there drove the Antarctic chill furthest north it's been in 2013. East of the North Atlantic, we have Spain and Portugal still wondering if they somehow woke up in Africa, all the air coming north. I do not disagree with Noah's danger zone tonight, but I would like to make it bigger, stretch it east to Minnesota and up across the border into Canada. The convergence we are seeing occurring with high and low up here will need to equalize all the heat and moisture that is rushing due north. Tornadoes are possible, but the hail, lightning, and wind should be worse. Flaring is quiet. Those sea flares are coming less frequently. Our big sunspot groups are not decayed yet, but they are elongating for sure and losing some of the peripheral spots. Taking a look at 1785 and 87 together. First, the leading spot is no longer splitting. It's all positive blue. You see two red delta wannabes trying to play up front there and solid magnetic mixing potential in the middle. The backside group appears much better divided magnetically, but you can indeed see both polarities trying to mix in the center. Last and least, the leading spreader continues to build umbral size but cannot mix polarity as we watch her exit the earth-facing disk. Okay folks, yesterday I described how south-pointing magnetism in the solar wind is rare but can be worse than CMEs because they are directly opposed to our field and penetrative. We saw the red BZ coming back up most of the day yesterday after the impact. Earth's continually fading magnetic shield managed to deal with the disturbance affected particle flux as well. As the day went on, the disturbance left our electric layers and began entering the atmosphere for its journey to the core. We can track this energy to a certain degree as it moves throughout our system. This is normal, but when you get magnetic instability, it's very obvious, especially with likely high penetration levels. This actually peaks after the magnetic disturbance peaks, right when two identical planes on opposite sides of the planet had problems. I've discussed our continually fading shield for two years. Things like this have been long expected. It's still 100% speculation, causation on my part. But the fact that the fully operational fact checker that might allow me to confirm or deny my claim was turned off midday yesterday. Folks, you remember I discussed the arm extending out to hold the opaque disc that blocks the sunlight glare. I now draw attention to a speedy little object that is hiding behind the arm this morning will pop out tomorrow. It's Mercury, and for those who remember, we are indeed just days away from the geocentric conjunction of Mercury and the Sun. Reason Mercury appears so low in the Soho frame is because Mercury's highly inclined orbital plane has it south of Earth's orbital plane at this time. We are awaiting a coronal hole stream from that dark northern opening at some point today or tonight. Don't forget, we still have one incoming just behind this active region, currently blocked by its magnetic field, but trans-equatorial nonetheless. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.